I remember one of those days in my GSS2. It was break time, end of time. And it was time to go back to school. I started crying. I told my dad I wasn't going back to that school anymore. <coughs> he asked me why. I told him it was too expensive. But he told me he wasn't complaining. I said, no, I can feel your pains. I was born into a family of nine. I'm the sixth. I still have people behind me. How are you going to take care of these people? I know what you're facing. I know your struggles. He told me, Udoka, don't worry. Just go. So from there, I decided I have to find a way to assist this old man. I still have a long way to go anyway. So I managed to finish my secondary school in 99. Then once I finished, started writing jump, it wasn't working. Then I decided I wasn't going to be a liability. I need to start up something. I can't just sit doing nothing, eating. Besides that resolution that I'm going to do something to assist this, my family as well. So I had to get myself a computer system. And I stayed in my room, locked up every day. I was learning how to design websites online. I could easily have gone to uh, uh, training centers for this, but there was no money. I had to train myself. I, I tried to acquire every skill that I would need. Then later on, I decided to take it to another step. I started sourcing for, sourcing for jobs. Companies weren't hiring. Everywhere I get to, they tell me we are not employing. I have decided, I decided I wanted a career in ICT. So I went to this particular company, Sky Synergy Networks then. By the way, I didn't tell us I was raised in Akure. Undo State Capital. So I approached this company. The CEO said they weren't employing. I was like, boss, don't pay me. Do not pay me. I just want to work. One, I had two things in mind. I need access to the internet, which will help me, further help me to achieve my aim. And I need skills as well, of which I do not have the money to get to acquire. So I started working for them. So it was just that way till I was able to go to United University of Adu AKT. I got there, I started the same thing. Things were coming from the side, jobs were coming from the side now, at least I was, I was able to sustain myself, not having to worry my dad or my mom for logistics or for money. So later on after that, I came back to Akure. The situation hadn't improved. It was still the same. I told my dad. I asked him if there was any plan at all, if there's, I know now, nothing. We're just living from hand to mouth and everything. So I decided one day, I slept. And I woke up and I told my dad. I'm leaving town. He said, to where? I said, Daddy, I don't know. I just told him. In fact, I just made that decision. I didn't even, it just came. I, I don't know. I'm leaving town. He said, where, my son? I said, Daddy, by the time I, I sleep and wake up in the morning, I would have known where I want to go. So in the morning, I woke my daddy up. I said, Daddy, I'm going to Port Harcourt. He said, Port Harcourt. Who do you know in Port Harcourt? Honestly, no one. No one. So how do you intend to survive? I said, Daddy, I will survive. So when I got here, one resolution, one thing that was on my mind was this. Even if I have to sleep under the bridge in Port Harcourt to make it, I will. 
And that thing really helped me. It's really helped me. I got there. Then I was just stranded. I was just standing by somewhere. And I called my friend Wally back in Agure. I didn't want to tell him I was, stra I was stranded. So he now said, ah, ah, but Jude, Banky is serving in uh, Portaco. They just posted him. They just finished their batch, whatever, then, and posted Banky to. He was the manager in one of those cafes that I was working as an engineer. I said, it's true. And I called Banky. Banky Hafa, you don't come off for camp. Banky said, yes, they have deployed them, that he is at Iriebe, Iriebe, Copper's Lodge. I told him, Banky, I have nowhere to stay. I just sent that towel. Banky said, Jude, they come now. Come. Can you stay in the Copper's Lodge? I was like, yes. He gave me the, di the direction. And I headed there. I had no money. A few clothes. No connection, no contacts, nothing. Just like a virgin land. So I landed there. Banky was feeding me morning, afternoon, and night. Sometimes I'll be like, what am I even doing here? And then that mind will come again, guy. You have something, you have something you're chasing. Keep going. So once in a while, I'll be like, okay, I have to, I have to strategize. Now, I'm in the IT industry. How do I, what do I do? How do I connect with people that are into ICT here? So one thing I just did was to go online, pa, 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 started Googling ICT companies in Port Harcourt. The results came. I got their contacts, phone numbers, addresses, and everything. I started making calls. The few calls I made was very, very discouraging. I was like, no, this one, it's not a call something. Banky Afa, how much can I raise from you? I was already eating into this guy. He gave me some money, a copper. I moved out into town. Started visiting these companies one after the other. The same idea, the same technique I used back in Akure was the same thing I had to deploy here again. I don't want unemployment. I want to work for you. I want to work here. So when they have projects, they call. We sit down, we write, if not code or anything. We just design, and then off I go. Whatever comes out, I'll just go back. Even if it is a tuba of yam, I will buy and go back to Banky's room. Oh boy, let us manage this one. On one of such occasions, I had to run to God in prayers. I was like, what is happening? Should I give up? Should I give up? The same me that asked that question, should I give up? Answered myself, that, oh boy, you said even if it takes you, even if you have to sleep under the bridge in Portugal to make it, you will. I was like, ah, you never even reach under the bridge, self, but they complain. So I continued in my sojourn. Then one day, a call came through. My cousin said there was a job somewhere, web design, around Oginibwa. He called me. I didn't even have money to come out from Iriebe. He sent me money to come for the interview. So after the interview, they were like, are you sure we can pay you? <laughs> I'm sure you know what that means. Are you sure we can pay you? I'm like, definitely. How much are you guys paying? They said 25,000. I was like, coming from UDAB, 25K. I said, no, well, I'll do it. That was how I started. Eventually, at the end of the month, nothing remains, you know, transportation and everything. So my sister now called me. My sister happens to be a reverend sister. So uh, all the white that this was happening, they, had, they now posted that from Onitsha to Port Harcourt, the sister's um, convent at Harbour Road. 
She called me. She said, why don't you come and stay here? I was like, me, guy, man, come and stay in the sister's convent. For what? <laughs> she tried to persuade me, but I refused. I continued. Then the hunger and everything intensified. The stress, I became like this. I had to give in. I moved my things. She said I should come with Banky. Oh. So, I went with Banky. We got to the convent. She had to thank Banky. You know sisters now, that they gave food away. Well. So she packed and packed and packed food. Discussed with her fellow reverend sisters. Packed food into the boots of the car we came with because we had, had to hire a car. And then give to Banky to go back. As I'm sure that food will last at least six months. <laughs> <laughs> so, so began my sojourn at Harbour Road. At least, my sister would give me something, I would go out, transportation. She had to affiliate me with a particular man who decided, okay, Mr. Abu, please, this is my brother, help him out. Abu said, what is your drive? What do you want to do? I'm like, I want to start my own company, sir, but I need an office. How do we do this? He was like, okay, will you be my IT manager? He is into um, waste management, even till now. You'll be my IT manager, I will create an IT section, you manage the place, and then you use the same place as your contact office. I was like, this is all I want, sir. That was how I started. A lady was assigned to me to be bringing me food at Harborough. They were feeding me morning, afternoon, and night. And then eventually, we, we got close. In fact, the moment I got into that compound that day with Banky, my sister told me, Udoka, this is who you are going to marry. I'm like, Auntie, I hope nothing is wrong with you. Sorry. I hope nothing is wrong. See, look at me. I'm hustling. I'm dried. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to look for a way to survive. You they point me, woman. I said, ah. so she just smiled. And she shook her head. She said, I would not understand. Ladies and gentlemen, that lady today is my wife. <laughs> so then, I would want to go to work. I wouldn't want to worry my sister. She, she was working in the school there as one of the staff. There's a school there. So she would give me change, money, as transport to go to work. Work that I will come back from, I will not come back with money. So I decided to register my company then. I didn't have money. I paid solutions. She gave me 7,000 Naira of her salary to register my company with CAC. I said, okay. So that was how I started. I got together a team of guys who would brainstorm. We tasked ourselves. Please, every week, each of us had to come up with ideas. ICT, like ideas, problems that can be solved ICT-wise. We we'll now sit down and brainstorm, try to look at these ideas and then see how we can modify and then possibly. So during one of such brainstorms, was when I came up with idea of a product. So I'm heading to the area of my, the little breakthrough now. A product, SRAMS, the Student Resource and Archive Management System. So when this came up, we started trying to market to schools. It's a school management system. So we started trying to market these products. And it was moving gradually. I came across a client that needed a service of a website. We discussed. He got to know about this product. He fell in love with it. And he said, what will it take to take this product? I just told him, small change. He was like, are you sure this is all you need? I'm like, yes, sir. He said, you are not sure. Go back and do your feasibility studies. So eventually from there, things started working. He just brought out then, 2013 uh, uh, or 14. He brought out about 200K. I said, dude, go and utilize this money. Put this in this your product. Let's see how far you can push it. So he was testing me, he was trying to see how my driver and everything. Or oh, this one, a person with the hungry, if you give him that money, what I ain't go wrong? Or will he misuse the money? Or 
So with that money, I was able to beef up this product the more. Started traveling, Lagos, Abuja. It was like, when are you going? I'm going tomorrow. By when? By road. I know, come, transfer money, flights. There was no arrangement. It was just something like love was showing. So when he saw the whole this thing, he started to come in as a partner. So that was just a life-changing part of the whole story. Tried to come in as a partner. Brought some money in, got an office, did the whole thing, employed people, did a formal registration with CAC and everything. So that is how I was able to overcome. These days when I just sit down and I look back at this story, I just, sometimes I cry, sometimes I just smile. And I keep thanking God I did not look back. On one of such occasions, my father called me. They, was, they needed help in the village and then there was no money and everything. You know what he said? So what are you doing there? Why not come back to, to the village and stay with us? That broke my heart. So these challenges came and everything. But I, I refused not to look back. One, I refuse not to be a liability. I refuse. I said I will not be a liability to my family, to anyone. Okay. Then I made hard work my mantra. If there's anything they call on hard work, I don't even know. I spent two, four hours working. It's very unhealthy. It's very unhealthy, but I spent 24 hours working because I know I want, this is what I'm targeting, this is what I want to achieve. Then I try to surround myself with progressive minds. Only progressive minds. If you know what you are after, if you know what you are after, then definitely we can work. But if you are the type that will sit here and then every small thing you want to be paid, it will be hard for such a person to move forward, provided you know that their surrounding, that environment, there are opportunities there, opportunities you can tap into. The moment you start demanding for pay, it will really, really, really tarnish your image, and then it will definitely uh, make you, at the, whoever is leading the team, definitely push you out. So with this brief story, I hope I've been able to inspire uh, some of us who may be going through this phase or that phase in life to be able to stand, stand firm and push harder because definitely, like they say, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you very much.